Uh, welcome everybody, Fauteroy Belair, uh, and a special welcome to our guests, Rachel Hopkins MP, Isabel O'Connor, Embassy of Ireland, Hazel Simmons, leader of Luton Borough Council. I will, I will read that again. A number of our members uh, passed away this year, including our long-serving trustee, Frank Horan, who passed away last month. Frank was a great supporter and cultural champion since the establishment of the charity 22 years ago. He will be greatly missed by his friends at LIF and the Luton community at large. Can we have a minute's silence now to pay our respects to all our deceased members? That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Sorry, hang on. Sorry, Tom. Go ahead, Tom. We okay. Thank you. Uh, we have just um, said farewell to Ruri. Um, Dowling, who has been a great friend of ours here at the Luton Irish Forum, and we are thrilled to uh, in, invite Isabel O'Connor to say a few words. Isabel has just joined the Embassy of Ireland, I think, yesterday, and uh, we are absolutely thrilled that she has taken the time out and uh, to say a few words to all of you at Luton Irish Forum. Isabel, thank you very much for um, attending. And um, if you can say a few words to all our, our colleagues who uh, absolutely are so grateful to the Irish government, uh, the Irish Embassy, and uh, everybody who works there for what they do for us here at Luton. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, so yes, I actually arrived late last night, so, and I came by ferry, so very literally fresh off the boat. And <laughs> I'm very happy, very happy to meet you all this morning. Um, and so, as, as Tom mentioned, I'll be taking over from Rory Dowling in the Embassy. And on behalf of the Embassy, I would like to acknowledge the excellent work of the Luton Irish Forum, especially in the last 12 months. I know that I've been doing a little bit of research before my arrival, and in normal times, you successfully deliver a range of welfare advice and heritage activities. And I understand that in the last five months or so, you've also proven yourselves very agile in continuing to deliver these services and also additional services to respond to the pandemic. And I really want to commend the approaches that you took to quickly adapt to things like remote working, initiating telephone befriending services and increasing your online social media presence. And just really to reiterate that your work to respond to the demands of the pandemic and help keep your community informed and up to date was really very, very impressive and critical and very, very valuable in this challenging time for all of us. Uh, I also understand through my colleagues that you recently received the Queen's Award for Voluntary Services. So I'd like to offer you personally and on behalf of the Embassy, my sincere, sincere congratulations for such a fantastic honour, which is very clearly so well deserved. And again, on behalf of the Embassy and the Government of Ireland, I'd just like to say how proud we are to support your work over so many years. And I, I look forward to working with you over the next few years and, and meeting all of you both virtually and hopefully in real life when, when time allows. So thank you very much for having me here this morning. Thank you very much. We are so, we are so grateful. And um, 
hopefully that we will be able to celebrate uh, receiving the Queen's Award very shortly and uh, you can be sure of an invitation to that. So uh, write that down. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. That's right, great. Thank you. Lovely. Okay, so can I move on to uh, the minutes of the last AGM? Um, I'll find them now. Uh, has anybody got any matters arising from the minutes of the last AGM? I, I know it's not just a year ago, it's actually uh, 14, nearly 15 months ago because of the pandemic. So if we can take them as read, and uh, could I have a mover and second other that are true and correct record, please? I have D, thank you, and, and Janet, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Okay, so we move on to the, the chair's report. I, again, this is um, a report would normally have been done um, two or three months ago. So many of the amazing um, actions by our members and our trustees and all our supporters and clubs uh, haven't necessarily been mentioned here because we were only just after the lockdown when this was when this was written. Anyway, I will I will be as precise as possible so as that other people can have a have their say later on. A uh, falter of Galair, welcome to you all. It's a great honour to report to you on another successful and eventful year at Luton Irish Forum. Uh, that's up to the 20, 31st of March 2020, when in circumstances not experienced in our lifetime, we were required, in line with government and medical advice, to stay at home, stay safe, and obey lockdown rules. I am pleased to report that despite these stringent restrictions in place since the 24th of March, the Luton Irish Forum continues to provide help and advice while at all times obeying the rules due to our dedicated staff, trustees and volunteers. A special thank you to Nic Nicola and her welfare advice team, to Janet for extending our services to include food delivery and telephone befriending, Joanne and our secretary Marion for daily contact with, uh, with our members. As was recorded throughout this review, uh, the Luton Irish Forum has continued to excel in its core aims and in addition engaged and supported an increasing number of clients and organisations. The intergenerational project managed by Fiona continues to engage with second and third generation Irish and other members of our wider community. We have been provided with strategic management support by the Cranfield Trust by the Elevate program and engage a branding refresh with M and C Sachi through in-kind in support from the Home Office, Britain Stronger, Britain Together program. Our clubs continue to flourish with increasing numbers, developed and new members and in innovative ideas, including uh, tea and chat, baby and toddler art and calligraphy, uh, group choir, pipe band and dance classes. Um, and very popular already showing benefits to befriending service to those whose mobility impairs them from assessing social groups. Irish language and computer classes continue, including the, uh, the autumn and clubs enjoyed a number of seaside party, uh, autumn social and Christmas party being highlights. Unfortunately, this year, we didn't manage to get to the seaside yet, but I'm sure once we get back, there will be a, a great demand to get a few buses on the road again and get down to the seaside. This year's cultural seminar was hosted by Marian Elliott, speaking on religion and cultural identity in Northern Ireland, again, allowing the audience to express their experiences. A special thank you also to Kathleen and the baby and toddler group, which raised 530 pounds at a Macmillan coffee morning. Thank you very much. This year engaged with a number of local and, and national organisations, including Irish Youth Federation, or, or local societies, Net, Irish Network Stevenage, uh, High Town Festival, Luton Carnival, Luton Miller, 
uh, Windrush event, HM Prison Bedford, uh, Luton Culture and Safe Home Ireland, uh, Lee Grave Cultus and GA Clubs, uh, in, including the Hope Charity Northampton Visit, and John Devine and Cultus. So a very, very, very busy year. No less than I represented the Forum at, an, at the Embassy of Ireland on numerous occasions, met with the Ambassador Adrian O'Neill and Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney to discuss Irish diaspora issues regarding funding Irish culture. Uh, on invitation from the Embassy, I also attended a Music Network Ireland event at St. Oliver's Parish Church. I would like to congratulate our trustees uh, and volunteers, Pauline Sylvester, Noreen Kellett and Marion Curtis, who were runners up in the 2019 Irish and Britain Group Awards, and our volunteer, Tony Murphy, who was named Volunteer of the Year at Luton's Community Awards 2019. In addition, the Luton Irish Forum has been assessed for the Trusted Charity Mark, and I can now tell you we've received that Trusted Charity Mark. And we've also now, I can tell you again, that uh, I couldn't have, when I wrote it, uh, that uh, we have been awarded the Queen's Award for Voluntary Services. And when it's uh, safe to do so, the High Sheriff uh, will make a, a presentation to us and we will ensure that uh, we have a full engagement by all our members and all our volunteers. I uh, just go on to say, of course, why we were un un unfortunately unable to uh, carry on with that St. Patrick's Festival this year because of the, the lockdown. And um, really, um, this has caused a degree of sadness, I know, because it's a, one of our highlights, it's the highlights, one of the highlights of Luton, one of our highlights as, as um, the Irish in, in Luton. And uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel it at short notice. But nevertheless, while this caused a degree of sadness, particularly to those who had spent a number of months preparing and rehearsing the event, um, uh, we reassure our sponsors and supporters that we will be back in 2021. And again, I would like to thank you for all your support and understanding. Again, I would like to thank uh, the volunteers and all the work they've done and all the groups who have uh, participated in Zoom meetings, all apart really from the bingo, which uh, we will make a, 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 an announcement on later, have been carrying out uh, in, in their meetings on, on Zoom. And that is really uh, appreciated by everybody, the calligraphy group, the art club, tea and chat, all doing uh, contacting by Zoom. Luke's been doing delivery of shopping to all some of our, our, our members who uh, have uh, difficulty moving around. So there's been an, a massive, I've got to admit that when uh, lockdown was announced, I didn't see a way forward, uh, but our staff and our members and our volunteers have come up to the um, the podium, if you like, and the amount of work they have put in and the amount of, uh, of, of energy they have uh, and work they have contributed. I think it's made a big difference to the people of, of Luton and I would like to thank you for that. So I would write, finally, I wish to express my thanks to Ambassador Adrian O'Neill for taking the time to make contact with us here in Luton. Our Chief Officer, who has worked tirelessly to raise our profile and secure the funding that keeps Luton Irish Forum forefront of the charitable organisations. Our staff, trustees, volunteers, our friends, uh, and those who support us from other organisations for their support and understanding at this demanding time. Gaurav Mahagwit, thank you. Is there any questions or comments on the report? I'm sure you've all had time to read it in your lockdown period. <laughs> or maybe you may decide to read it now when, when, you know, when you have a cup of tea after this. But if there's any comments or questions, then that would be great. No? Lovely. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. So now I would like to uh, move on to our annual accounts. And I would ask Mark, Mark Hubbock from Wagstaff 
to uh, make a presentation to you. And then if you have any questions, obviously you, you can uh, speak to Mark. Mark, thank you very much. You'll have to be unmuted. I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Um, well, I can honestly say this is a first for me, a first for presenting a set of accounts whilst on a bed. So <laughs> I can only apologise for that. I don't normally sleep with accounts, but I promise um, I'll, I'll make it brief and I'll just um, touch on the highlights. I think a number of things that um, you've said, Tom, um, and have been picked up obviously already, is the amount of work that you've done um, behind the scenes. So what we've kind of seen with the numbers um, is an increase of just under 10%, 10 uh, 10 um, or just over 10%, I think it's 11 point something percent, um, from 360K to just shy of 400K of revenues. Um, grant money is coming in this year. I think um, it's a um, testament to the work you do behind the scenes of the new funding streams that you've, you've managed to um, grab hold of. Um, and I think, um, obviously, you need to continue that work into this year, which, from the sound of it, you already are. Um, in terms of expenses, um, overall expenses are just a bit over that. Um, there are just, I think it's £409,000 total. Um, so you recorded a, an in-year um, deficit, but that was not cash um, because within the numbers there, um, you've actually got a, a £10,000 just over depreciation So from a cash perspective, um, this even year, um, but obviously after deducting depreciation, which is non-cash, and that's just how we recognise the expense of the way the building uh, rolls out over the 50 years, um, that just takes us into that in-year deficit. But as um, you know, it's a bit of a, a challenging year for pretty much everyone, um, but uh, I think uh, it's testament to you that um, you still have uh, substantial reserves to carry forward to your reserves um, this year of just shy of 535,000 total. So in terms of the way that breaks down, obviously the, the biggest asset you have is um, the building, um, which the depreciated amount this year is 372,000. Um, and then you had uh, money in the bank um, as at the end of March because we're looking Sorry, back in Mark, history um, of just under um, so fundamentally those years there. does, Sorry, does that still work up there. Uh, people might say I've been cracking up for years but yeah there we are um, no, a terrible internet signal but yeah just saying that the bulk of your, the way the funds are comprised is the written down value of the building um, plus cash um, so from a financial robustness um, point if you, you are financially robust at the end of the year and um, well resourced into this year and if we look at the actual reserves themselves I did a little calculation um, just based at the end of March and you had um, reserves enough to equate to exactly five months worth of expenses assuming zero revenue um, so again from a charitable perspective I mean that's a, a strong position to be in um, the one thing I always say year in, year out is don't underestimate um, the work that all your um, volunteers do. Um, I think in the calculation you'll see in the trustees report um, within the numbers, I think the calculation was just over £40,000 would be the actual value if you can you know, be crude enough to assign values to these things. But the, the trustees themselves for time, um, that represent just over about £42,000 worth of value. Um, which you don't see in the numbers. So I think, you know, again, you can kind of see without the contribution of your of all the volunteers that you have, um, evidently that starts to chew into um, cash should you have to pay them. So I think, you know, charities, generally speaking, can't survive without um, volunteers. So I think um, you've got a good band of volunteers. Um, so you need to hold on to them. Um, one of your prized possessions, I think. Um, so I think in terms of um, going forward, I think the only thing I can say is you are in a strong position. Um, obviously, um, what's been impressive is the way that you've um, adapted really, really quickly. Um, and obviously, you continue to offer the support to the community. So again, you know, if you're tapping into new revenue streams this year to do it, um, again, testament to all the work you do in, in the background. So I think fundamentally, those were the numbers. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see what this year looks like. So, any questions? 
Thank you very much. That's, that's very that's very encouraging. Is there any anybody who's got questions for Mark before he gets back to the sunshine and the sea? <laughs> any, any questions? questions? <laughs> if you all being terrorized by my two year old. If you haven't, <laughs> thank you. If you haven't got any questions, can we have a proposal and seconder for approval of the annual accounts, please? Luke, Luke is uh, moving on. Oh, a seconder, a seconder is Pauline. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. All those in favor? I won't see hands. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. So the accounts have been agreed. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for all your support you and your company have given us over the year. Thanks very much and enjoy the, the rest no, of, no of your holiday. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And see you again. Take care. Yeah. Oh, the, the, next, the next item is motions. We have not received any motions, so I'll move on to uh, the uh, election of the Board of Trustees. Um, I just explained there were four vacancies uh, for, of trustees and as a charitable company uh, limited by guarantee the trustees must retire in rotation one third each year. This helps ensure continuity for LIF services and activities. Siobhan Rooney will step down this year as she is about to take maternity leave. She will, she will be available to us for advice um, and I wish Siobhan the very best of luck with her pending arrival. Noreen Kellett, Mary Winter are eligible and wish to stand for a further three-year term. Luke Kitchen and Elisa Rusby also wish to stand. All candidates have st stand unopposed and are therefore automatically elected onto the board and I will invite the candidates to introduce themselves and read a short statement please and if we, we can if we can stand stop with Noreen Noreen can you I haven't got the printed statement with me here but I can you, you don't need to, if you haven't got it just a, um, um, okay. a few right. words of, of reassurance to the to the board and and to the membership um, I'm coming up for my 21st year as a member of the Luton Irish Forum, which is most of the time I've served in one role or other on the board, including chair. Um, I have enjoyed the time greatly and I hope I've contributed to the, both the forum and the wider community, which, I, which would be my speciality, I think. That would be what I'd be most interested in. I um, have decided to go on because... because um, I think at this past, this time, I, it would be a, probably have been a time for me to go, but we're in such a situation at the moment, nationally and in the form, I think it would not be a good time to walk away. So I have decided to stand again. I hope this is the right decision and I hope I can serve you all well in the future. Lovely. Thank, thank you very much. I wish you well. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask Luke to say a few words for us, please? Um, hi everyone, I'm Luke Kitchen. I wish to stand as a trustee so I can use my skills and experience in a way that allows me to give back and contribute to the local community. I hope that as a younger person, I can offer a different viewpoint and approach based on my own experiences, which when balanced out with the other trustees can offer huge benefits. I hope to support and shape the work of the Luton Irish Forum, putting the needs of all the beneficiaries first and help them make a significant difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Elisa, welcome. You're still muted. So Elisa, please. Yeah. Thank Hi, you. Um, really wanted to thank Nolette for um, nominating me and I'm really delighted to take up a role as a trustee. Um, I have particular interest in the arts and heritage and so far um, you might not have seen very much of me but you might have seen my work because I tend to write things for Fiona for exciting projects that we've done uh, such as St Bridget's Day. Um, I just really want to be part of this, this wonderful community just listening to um, Tom's report. It's like wow this is, this is just something huge and I'll do my best to serve in it. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now to um, now to Mary. Mary Winters, please, can you unmute? Might Mary, you're free to talk. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Winter and I'm very involved in the Tuesday and Wednesday Elders Club and also with the baby and toddler group on Friday mornings. Um, I know going forward we're going to have a very challenging time um, as we begin to meet in the forum and restart our clubs and I'm looking forward to the future and hopefully we're going to come out of this even stronger especially with our two lovely new trustees Elise and Luke and I'm looking forward to working with them as well as the remaining uh, trustees thank you and thank you thank you very much so congratulations to to all the trustees and a big thank you to all the um, people who support us and support the trustees because without you the trustees cannot cannot function without the support of the of the membership. So thank you very much to everybody. So now I'm going to move on uh, to um, project update, welfare, social, and intergenerational services. Uh, and I want to introduce Janet and Fiona, and then I will be introducing Nicola. So Janet and Fiona are going to make a, a presentation, and then. We will be moving on to, to Nicola. So thank you. I think this is going to appear on your screen. Hi. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. That's fine. So I'm a little bit away because I've got stuff in front. So these are the clubs. Um, these are our regular clubs and activities, which I know most of you um, recognise. Between them, they offer just about something for everyone. A wide range of local people come to them and a wide range of ages as well. Um, the clubs give people the opportunity to have social interaction, which I know at the moment we're all just realising how important that is. Seeing people face to face, having a catch up chat, um, and much more than that, members get to find out about interesting things, to try a new activity, have a go at a hobby, and listen to speakers on a range of topics from health and well-being and safety to dog fostering and visits from community groups such as the local Windrush group, which I know is really enjoyable, not just for the food. Um, but the art class has had a great attendance and it's gone from strength to strength. And they have regular demonstrations. Um, clubs are led by volunteers who are all great. So I could pick them all out. Um, and they had an exhibition in August, which was very successful as well. You can see some of their work when you come into the forum on the ground floor. Um, so if you haven't been in for a while, come and have a look and keep your eyes out for the next sale. Um, the baby and toddler group, encompasses anybody from newborn babies just a few days old or so sweet to little ones waiting to start school or go to um, nursery we've just the ladies running the baby and toddler group have recently organized certificates given out in the park for their little graduation so they've got little leaving certificate to take with them to the big school um, calligraphy is long-standing popular group and if you look on the, in the boil room again you'll see lots of examples of their work and like all our groups they're willing to take anybody interest you just want to have a go try the calligraphy um, they have a very patient leader and he can show you how to start off with pencils and develop really beautiful pieces of art beginners are welcome the choir um, singing is good for everyone, we know, we know that, and although they're not singing at the moment, they hope to be getting back soon. And I'm reliably informed by the choir master that you don't have to be an expert in a choir. Just come along and once, apparently once your voice is in with others, it sounds much better. The computer club is supportive one-to-one, -one, and the things that have been most 
frequently wanted people want to know about this year was relating to social media and staying in touch with friends and family, which I suspect is very helpful at the moment. And also how to shop safely and avoid scams because there's all these scams and some of them look very, very realistic as if you might, might be worth clicking on. Uh, genealogy is the service whereby you can trace your Irish ancestors and even discover ancestors you didn't have. So that's really interesting and we've got some interesting stories from people um, have come out of that as well. And you'll be able to read those. I know Fiona's working on a project putting all those together with help of Elisa and others. And they're, they're really interesting. The gentle exercise classes started in January and the idea is a little bit more mobile. It's less for the exercise addicts and um, those really fit people. It's more for people who aren't fit but would like to keep a little bit mobile and gradually improve fitness. Um, so they started off well and they were becoming quite popular when we put hold on them. The Irish language is ideal for beginners. From whether you're a beginner or a novice or you used to speak it, you can join the Irish language and it's quite conversation based. So it's not too intensive as in written work. It's more just chit chat and it's a friendly little group and you will be able to improve your Irish. The Literary Society hope you all know the entertainment evenings last year's was sold out as as it usually is actually because it's very popular and we're limited by space but that's you uh, of something like a short drama some poetry some prose some singing and just a musical performance or two included speaking of which the pipe band they meet a couple of times a week or they were meeting a couple of times a week and we'll be at some point again. Interestingly, this year they went to schools um, and picked up a few younger members. They stirred up some interest. So they've got a couple of um, teenage recruits who are affecting their skills. I think one's drumming and one's piping. I think um, the Tuesday and Wednesday clubs are probably the biggest number clubs. They're quite full normally. They're the bingo clubs and more and they have chicken and chips in the winter, uh, sorry, yeah, in, in the winter and cup of soups. And a lot of people there also go on the seaside trips. Um, the tea and chat, or we call tea and cake actually, because uh, it often has really nice cake in the group, um, is a lovely little group, ideal to come in and just have a natter and listen to speakers on different subjects. Um, it's that's again it's very popular as well and they are also involved in some community consultations so they've been used as a focus group um, to focus on local improvements etc um, the coach trips again are on hold at the moment but we normally have four trips at least to the seaside and another Irish centre and we are looking to have those again as soon as we can the Christmas party I think a lot of you came to the Christmas party, that's always popular. We have live music, food, dancing, entertainment. Um, so that's covered most of our social groups and activities, I think. That's an outline. If you want to know when they're on or where they're on, either look online, which we'll be updating as we're introducing these restarting, except we'll be updating, or and we'll be updating the printed what's on so line. The information will still be there, but we're gradually updating it as the groups come back. Thanks, Fiona. So the number of people that come to our groups is a lot, as you can see. 170 attendances a week for, for, is quite high. Um, <clears throat> and you, I don't need to read out the slides. I think you can probably all see them. But in a year, that's over 500 people came to what one or other of them. 100 enjoy our regular socials, which are a bit like the Christmas party, but not quite as, um, don't have quite such a large meal, etc. cetera. Um, but again, their music, dancing, and a good old chat and some food. So thanks, Fiona.
and this is why people say they come to lift groups this is from december 19 i believe and we did a quick survey at a couple of clubs and these are what you a lot of you because you're members you come to the clubs said why they come and i think you'll recognize that and i think we're only just the impact of covid has really made us even more aware that it's really important to socialize and have somebody to talk to face to face i mean zoom is great but there's nothing for places actually seeing people in person so this is why people want to come to our clubs um, and i think they're lovely comments uh, and last but not least on the next slide we we all our clubs as i said are run by led by volunteers and they do make the difference because without the volunteers, we wouldn't be able to have all the clubs. So thank you one and all to our volunteers because I'm standing up and speaking, but actually you do all the work day to day and talk, but you do the work, you run it week in, week out, you stay in contact with all your people and encourage them to come. So thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. The end. Sorry, yes, thanks. Okay. Um, sorry, it's very um, distracting trying to do your own tech. Um, okay, so, um, so I'm the Youth and Heritage Officer um, amongst doing other things, um, but I ran um, as well as intergenerational projects, I ran two other funded youth projects last year. So um, from June to December 19, um, I ran a, um, a third space project of British Other Culture. It was funded by um, Building a Stronger Britain Together Fund. Um, it, the idea of the programme was to get young people to explore um, how they make up Britain, so their British other culture. So it's particularly particularly looks at um, particularly second and third generations. Um, it I built it from the things that I'd learned through our development of um, our second and third generation um, engagement project, and thought if it applies to our communities, it would apply to all communities. Um, so the project um, I built a schools program. Um, and I delivered in the Avenue Centre for Education, which is a Luton pupil referral unit. Um, I delivered in Sacred Heart Primary, St Margaret's of Scotland Catholic Primary, St Martin de Porres Primary, St Mary's Catholic Primary, St Vincent's Catholic Primary, and we also um, trained some youth and community students at the University of Bedfordshire. So the schools programme, everyone explored their personal cultural identities so how all their different identities make um, make them um, which we've got some fantastic um, descriptions of people's identities of where all their parents and their grandparents came from and how they mixed so they learnt about their personal cultures um, the meaning of what British other culture means and we explored because there is no definitive answer. So it was um, getting just young people to just think about it and form opinions. Um, meaning of multicultural, the meaning of the law uh, regarding racism, hate crime and hate speech. Um, they gained an understanding of the effects of racism on a multicultural community. Um, we explored the story of Stephen Lawrence through a piece of artwork by British artist Chris O'Filly. Um, and we looked at the idea of um, if we tell stories through art and they will be looked at generations ahead, what would what artwork needs to be made now to represent Britain? And we discussion of um, should it only show the good things or it should also show the bad things to tell the story. So there's lots of um, debates and discussions. Um, they. Um, young people also got to express their favourite part of their culture. So we had lots of performances um, of singing and dancing and foot replays of um, famous football matches, lots of cricket. 
Um, we have found that there is a large volume of non-Irish young people who would like to have a go at Irish dancing. Um, also really, um, really interested in um, sharing different traditional music and language and um, the stories through their music. So it was a really good opportunity for young people to share and find out um, new things about um, young people in their classrooms. Um, for secondary schools, they um, did all of that as a core um, learning, but we also looked um, at cultural icons and people we look up to and why we look up to certain people and how they influence us. Um, we explored the work of British artists, artist um, Banksy and looked at political messages and that brought us to, we had an ethical debate about the Palestine wall and the effects on society who have walls in their communities and we talked about how different ways um, communities can be divided. Um, we also looked at um, biased news and propaganda and fake news so young people learn how to identify fake news and could learn how what the effects of that fake news can do. Um, also looked at all extremist propaganda so we looked at the far right and the islamic state and everyone in between so they really learned that extremism isn't to do with one community or one race or one idea it's an issue that goes across communities um and then they gained understanding of all definitions of the social phobia and isms words so they can really see how complex some issues can be if we look at the definitions and then how they cross over. Um, so we ran a train trainer program for youth and community students. So they actually learn how to deliver this program in the community. And um, they actually went out and, and tried and tested as well. But they also, um, we also trained them on what extremism is and the current threats in Britain. Um, they also, um, we, did a lot of work about how to deliver to young people because it could be quite um, an uncomfortable subject, especially talking about racism. So we looked at how we can adapt for different communities and how we can really manage debates um, and really kind of build young people's confidence in having a voice. Um, we also, I also, um, we took them through how to identify extremism and the effects on the community and we actually used um, we did a timeline of events um, in Northern Ireland leading up to the Troubles um, and we just looked at it from a youth and community view and um, really kind of it was like a community development exercise where we could pinpoint what we knowing what we know now what we would have wanted to put in to try and avoid the Troubles happening um, and then knowing all of that and bring them through the Troubles um, we got them to debate um, and to think about how Brexit is going to affect communities in Northern Ireland and propose what youth and community workers should be doing. Um, so that ran till December and we got great results. Um, young people felt more, more confident in discussing and debating and they um, felt a lot more confident in identifying extremism in their communities. And then also actually just finding out more about themselves and um, feeling more confident because they actually look parts of their culture and things that they like and actually their friends and classmates learning about them as well. So you kind of feel like more of one community because you know each other a lot better. Um, we then got funded from um, the Violence and Ex Exploitation Reduction Unit, VERU. Um, that was to run a three month ed education program in schools again. Um, we ran that just in um, Avenue Centre for Education. This was to look at British youth culture because lots of um, issues about youth culture came up in the previous British other culture. So we actually did a similar structure and actually explored what British youth culture is in relation to issues around extreme violence and gang recruitment. And it really gave young people a chance to tell adults how they think, what they think, their opinions of things, because they felt off very often that they're not, um, they're always spoken to, but they're not listened to. So we were able to 
um, have really open debates with young people to really push their, their thoughts and feelings around things. And we had lots of ethical discussions, but we were able to actually um, gather a lot of evidence of the gaps um, in professionals' knowledge of young people. So the idea if professionals have a better idea of young people, we are better equipped to come up with um, programmes and things to help them. Um, so throughout that and all last year, um, I was also running our intergenerational programme, Generation um, Irish Project. Um, it, it's been a following on um, project from the research that we did in 2018-19, which was really useful and gave us clear directions of things to develop. So we um, hosted a series of events. Um, we were part of Hightown Festival, where we had a stall and we arranged um, Irish dancing and music. Spooky Shaman up at Stockwood, so it was open to all families in Luton and we got an Irish storyteller and we did traditional um, Irish traditions around Halloween. Um, we supported the religion and cultural identity seminar um, and um, got people's views on that to inform what we can do later. Um, we hosted a film um, as part of Film Stock 12, The Man Who Wanted to Fly, which is an excellent little film, which we're hoping to screen again. We hosted St Bridget's Day where we celebrated um, Irish women in sports and we got to celebrate local Irish women in sports. Um, the pipe band um, went and did some drumming sessions at Cardinal Newman School and then actually had um, two young people um, actually join the band and they were ready to um, help the band lead the parade at St Patrick's. Um, obviously St Patrick's was cancelled but um, there was lots of work up leading to the actual um, weekend that we had already done and delivered. So um, we had great numbers overall. So across the three projects, we worked with 1,632 young people. 6% um, oh, and those were adults as well um, because um, we would also do family events. Um, 6% were first generation, 12% were second generation, and 8% uh, were third generation. And 74% were non-Irish, but this is really unusual for our, our statistics because um, we know that Linton St. Patrick's Festival is our biggest engagement point of the year. Um, so because it was cancelled, it was our large numbers that we didn't get to engage. Usually, um, we would see um, that we would work with 70% Irish and 30% non-Irish. Um, through all our work and being out in the community and speaking to young people about um, their cultural identities, we actually discovered a lot more Irish young people than you would assume. Um, so we had a much better idea of who's who and we discovered which we knew already because we'd um, meet people at um, St Patrick's Festival but it's great going out and speaking to young people who um, wouldn't necessarily um, claim themselves as Irish because it's part of their culture but not the dominant part um, or they felt that they weren't necessarily going to fit in with our activities but we were able to meet them and go no we are for you as well and we got to um, really see what they what they would want from us um, with the Black Lives Matters movement, we wanted to support our um, Black Irish and Irish other community members. So we actually went on social media and we actually started celebrating their achievements and just um, showing their faces and telling, uh, making sure everyone knew that we're proud that they're part of our community, which um, got great reception from the rest of our online community. And that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much for that. Can I, I now ask Nicola to um, complete that uh, project update, please? Nicola, are you? I am. I'm here. I'm ready. Um, Thank you very much. My, uh, the update is quite, quite. I've kept it quite short. So um, it, we're looking at the year that went from the first of April, 2019, to 31st of March, 2020. So. 
the figures we're looking at, the things we're going to talk about, don't really cover the period of lockdown. Um, but we're pleased to know we've been able to keep everybody's been um, working away, and we've been able to maintain quite a good um, service, and we've been able to maintain um, some areas of support that other organisations haven't. So, although we've been working remotely, we've been using our, uh, the postal service and our free post address to be able to still fill in forms for people and things like that whereas other services have reduced just down to telephone service so um back to uh, last year so in that year we worked with 697 individuals on 927 cases um so those people we worked with 39 percent of them were 50 to 64 and 25 percent were 65 so quite a lot of them are older. it's not surprising because we find that the most um, expected are people who generally um oh, really, Nicola, you're really breaking up Could you know yeah well, i don't know why okay well, is that any better yeah okay um yeah so it's the 50 to 64 age group they are the people who generally we're seeing people in that age group that are no longer able to work to do health or disability um but they are um, subject to very um, regular review on how they are being safe as the community. I've got no to say. Nicola, I'm just wondering if you turn your screen off, would that help? If I turn my screen off, will it help my voice? It, sometimes it improves the sound. Oh, if I turn off my picture. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. I get yeah. it now. Yeah, you're video. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they're people who are subject to regular review of their um, employment support allowance, so their out of work benefit and their disability benefit. Once people get to 65, um, once their benefits are in place, not generally as a rule, they stay, they stay uh, roughly the same. So those people, um, we tend to see them once for a longer, maybe a longer period of time, but then we might not see them again because once the issues are resolved, they tend to remain involved. Whereas those 50 to 64 are the people who have to keep coming back to us. Um, the other thing uh, that I thought was worth highlighting is um, that the people who we record marital status for, 68% of them were in a category where they would be single. Um, so that that is um, the large amount of people that we're seeing are people who are on their own um, and very often they're people because of their age group that are living um, completely on their own so we wouldn't really see lots of uh, single parents or things like that so we're seeing a lot of people who are completely on their own uh, next slide please Fiona okay so um, for those people we're mostly doing welfare benefits 74 percent of our work um, is people looking for welfare benefit support um, we tend to use, use, make use of other services and enable people to make use of other services um, for some of the other areas. So um, for housing, largely we uh, support people to access um, Luton Law Centre because they're specialist housing solicitors um, and they can support people right through to representation and eviction if that's uh, an issue. Um, and with debt, we tend to um, get people to access the specialist service that the citizens advise Bureau. So we always ask people to come back to us if, if it doesn't work out for them, for whatever reason. But largely, um, we are able then to deal with more people with, who need help with welfare benefits, where that support is more lacking in other places in the town, uh, by accessing those services for housing and debt. So within welfare benefits, you can see those top two, which is personal independence payment and employment support allowance. So uh, personal independence payment, I say new, but it's not new, it's been around since 2013. So that is a um, disability benefit, which is paid as a top up to people who have disability related expenditure. Um, and ESA, which is Employment Support Allowance, is um, the main out of work benefit for people who are unfit to work. Um, that will slowly over time be replaced by universal credit and how we report what those people are doing will be different but at the moment um, you can see the large majority of people are coming for those benefits which are those regularly reassessed um, benefits and those that need um, challenging quite often with mandatory considerations and appeals. 
Um, and in the other two areas, housing benefit and council tax reduction and universal credit. We expect the universal credit to start creeping up as more and more people uh, go across to that benefit. So next slide, Fiona. Okay, so we recorded 1,709 positive outcomes. Um, we uh, challenged 114 decisions successfully, either mandatory reconsideration or appeal, and that resulted in 1.7 million of financial outcomes for um, our clients, which is, uh, I think, a little bit higher than it was before. I think it's slowly creeping up uh, year on year. Um, but I mean, it's a, for a small team of four, it's a massive amount of money, really. Um, we also had our uh, AQS assessment. So we had, um, that's our quality mark. So we've held that mark since 2012. Um, and we're regularly reassessed for every couple of years. It hardly seemed like two years between. Um, but we had a very positive um, experience. We had a list of 28 areas um, where we had uh, good practice so where we've gone above and beyond what the um, standard requires um, and the assessor actually said LIF is a warm friendly and welcoming organization with strong leadership and comprehensive set of robust policies and procedures in play it was clear to the assessor that there is active management of the standard and a genuine desire to seek improvements to the organization and running of the service as evidenced by the feedback obtained the interview and extensive supporting documentation as a result, LIFT performed very well against the standard, and this is reflected in the assessment outcome. The document, central records and interview evidence gathered on the assessment day demonstrated a strong, committed team, all of whom responded well to the changes required by the standard. So that was, that represents, it's not my work, that represents the work of the whole team outside of the welfare service as well. So we um, had a lot of support from EVA with the, and the let with the policies, um, and then the client journey, so those who are working with people in reception, the whole way through. It's not just a representation of our work, it's a representation of the whole of the organisation, really. Um, yeah, I think, I don't, I think I've got one more slide, Fiona. Yeah, so these were some of the things people said. So um, every year we have a telephone survey um, where people are asked about how they felt before they came, um, the impact their issues were having on them and, and how coming here has helped them improve. So 84% said they felt less anxious, irritable, stressed, and 80% felt less down. 100% of people that came said, or that responded said that as a result of working with us, their health and well-being had either maintained or improved. And 92% said it helped them remain independent. 71% uh, said it helped them meet basic costs like food, heating, etc. Uh, these things that a lot of us take for granted. Um, I think that's it. Is there any other questions? It's very strange because you're all on mute and I can't even see myself. It's uh, like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I think that's a big, a big, big thank you to, to the groups for what they're doing. Thanks very much for that. That's our, no that's our outstanding report. Thanks very much for that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to move, move on now in relation to, and, and uh, again, continue the good, the good news. Uh, we will be contacting the groups uh, and the group leaders so as that you get back uh, to have a, a, a discussion about how uh, you move forward in the next in the next year. And um, that's normal after the AGM that the groups get together and set themselves up for another year, another year of volunteering and another year of work. Um, I can also. So say to you that membership has rolled over for a year, therefore member subscriptions have been extended to June 2021. So you don't need to renew, but it will be helpful just let us know if your contact details change or if uh, in view of all the work that's been done in the local community, new people might want to join so you can get them in touch with us and we can, facil we can facilitate that. Um, can I thank all those who returned uh, the, the reopening questionnaires uh, because we did a survey to uh, ensure that we, we were trying to do what you wanted us to do, if you like, from the heritage questionnaire. As promised, you have been entered into a draw and I'm delighted to announce the winner is Maureen Keegan. 
Maureen, you have won £50 voucher for the mall in Luton and uh, will be hand delivered to you. And spend it, <laughs> spend it wisely. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you will. But I'm also delighted to say that we have decided that it is safe to reopen from the 1st of September on a gradual and measured basis. And the measures will include pre-booking, shorter sessions, fewer people per session, a one-way system, social distancing and controls, and sanitizer stations which are, have been in place and staff will wear PPE and this will is all that uh, with a very big welcome back and also people will be expected to wear face masks coming in except when they're uh, eat, eating and we will we will supply some food to the bingo etc and we're going to obviously have to do this with um, decorum speak to people properly uh, assist people as they they come in and explain to people that it's not just us making the instructions it's the need to safeguard their health and well and well-being and i think we have been wise in closing down and in time and I, I really believe that by being a bit careful opening up then we will be able to facilitate all the all the groups back we will work very hard to do that and we will be calling on some volunteers to give us an extra couple of hours help to guide people and, and assist them so i would like to close the meeting by thanking everybody for their participation uh, by ensuring that um, that you 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 have felt involved i know it's it's a new thing to me, it's a new thing to, to you all dealing in this, uh, in this way. But nevertheless, I think it's important that we, we maintain the um, support that we give the local community in, in Luton and indeed as we go forward. And how nice to see patients, our uh, common visitors, our student placement, who took the time off this morning uh, to come and participate in, in this meeting. Uh, I cannot uh, be more proud of all our, our workers, all our, our members and uh, all our volunteers. So I would like to, uh, Sandra wants to say something before I close the meeting. Sandra? Uh, two things, Tom. One, could I hand over to Councillor, uh, Councillor Rachel Hopkins, MP, first of all, to say something on behalf of LBC. And then I will say something about COVID, if you don't mind. Thank you. Rachel, over to you. Okay, Tom, I just want to say a few words. Um, thank you for inviting me to the AGM. And it's the first AGM on Zoom and it's great to be part of it and hearing about the fantastic work that you do. Obviously, I know so much what you do, but when you see it, you know, really clearly set out about the positive impact you have for everybody in our town, it's, it's brilliant. And primarily the point Sandra um, is referring to is how you've absolutely stepped up um, to support the council and our community during COVID-19. Um, you know, you talked about it earlier around how you had to shift things, but you know, you've been out there offering, you know, literally physical well-being, emotional well-being, and supporting our community. And I just want to say thank you. I mean, it's you know, like you say, there, there's it's both staff but also volunteers, and we know in Luton across all our communities, it's our looking out for each other ethos that will always get us through and, it, and it's just my chance to say thank you both as a councillor and as an MP which is a, still a real privilege when I say that so thank you. thank you. Thank you so much and thank you for your continued support thank you. Sandra? Okay. Thanks Tom uh, and thank you uh, councillor MP and it's wonderful to have a, a councillor who's now an MP as well uh, and, and one thing she forgot to mention that her, her father used to always mention at the AGMs was that she has a niece who's half Irish so that he used to always two nieces that are half Irish I, I, he, he used to just say he, his granddaughter or I, I thought so but it's so not alone is it a, a, a a Luton connection, it's a real Irish connection. Um, from my point of view, I want to echo what uh, Councillor Hopkins has said, but also to say, unfortunately, uh, 
this isn't going away. <laughs> COVID w is there for the future. And I mean, the amount of voluntary work that has been done is just incredible. But even when we reopen, and thank God that, you know, LIF is in a position to reopen in, in September, a lot of places, including us in our council community centres, will not be in the, that position for quite a while. But, you know, people have to accept even me, which is crazy for me because of what I do in my own life, that, you know, we, it won't be the same. We won't have the same number of people in buildings and we can't. Uh, and I mean, at one stage, you know, let Fiona and I were joking about as, as opposed to it being tea and chat that you have run so very well in, in the, the forum, it might become tea and test. Uh, because, you know, we do have a, an ongoing thing that we need people to get to continue to get tested for COVID. We are, as of yesterday, we opened another centre, testing centre in Luton, in um, a, a walk-in centre uh, in Bury Park Community Centre. You and the Irish Forum have offered, have kindly offered, and we will be taking you up on your offer to open a centre uh, for specific uh, people during the year. Uh, and it's something we have to say this is not, you know, we will continue to have to test people. And I know, and I'm one of the people who's asked this question, the more we test, the more people we get it. But the reason we're doing this, and I, I've had this from public health, is if we don't know how many people have either had it in the community, you know, in the community, we can't actually move on. So it's just, uh, and I'm sorry for being a donor, but I think it's been wonderful. Uh, and uh, the last thing from me is a particular congratulations to Fiona uh, and with no let support, the amount of work that the COVID volunteers uh, and the amount of work that uh, Fiona and Scott have done on Facebook is incredible. So thank you. Lovely. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes, um, it's so helpful to get that uh, information. We are all in this together, as they say. I know that's the cliche, but uh, we are used to working with all the different communities. Uh, indeed, uh, we, we work with um, Sri Guru Rabadas and all the other communities about, uh, in order that we get um, and we get the best of our, for our members. I, I just want to uh, assure you that everything is put in place that uh, is ensuring that people are going to be safe, but we've got to, uh, understand that and people have got to understand why these restrictions are put in place and that's i think that education is going to help as we as we go through i would like to uh, thank everybody um who attended everybody who has helped us in and in particular our uh, our staff who have worked during this meeting meeting today and again i will repeat i'm very proud of you all thank you very much